to think about what you want behind your product. And we need to set that up. And we need to set it up properly. So you need to think about um, a surface to put your product on. You need to think about a background stand to um, clamp your background to. Um, and you need to think about what you want behind your subject. Do you want it a solid color? Do you want it a bright color? Do you want it a dark color? Do you want to maybe add some texture with some different um, materials? This one is fuzzy. This one is like burlap. Do you want to add some color? Maybe you want to contrast the color of your product with a different color. Um, in my classroom, I mainly have material backdrops. If you want something to look a little smoother um, with no wrinkles in it, you can use a piece of paper. Um, depending on how large your product is, you could use a piece of poster board or a large piece of rolled paper that will give you a nice smooth surface from top to bottom. You also want to make sure that you start by um, cleaning and making sure your backdrop is nice and neat before you shoot. We don't want to rely on Photoshop to clean up all those little fuzzies on the backdrop. Um, so you could use something like a lip roller to get all of the fuzz and other random things off of your backdrop. Um, you can also use something like a steamer <laughs> to steam out all the wrinkles in your backdrop. If you want to have things on different levels, like different planes, one thing higher than the other thing, you can use, um, I have little blocks of wood, or you could use anything really that's as tall or as wide as you need it to be, something as simple as like a book. Um, and what you do is you actually take it and you will put it underneath. You will put it underneath your backdrop. That way you can't tell what it is, so it doesn't really matter what it is, and you will rearrange your backdrop over top of your level, and then you can place your products wherever you want them. So say I want this one up higher, and I want this one kind of lower. You have to make sure that you can see your labels, right? You have to make sure you can see the important part of the product. So another thing that we use is this poster putty. Um, this poster putty is great if you say you want this to be at a specific angle. What you can do is actually ball up some poster putty and lean it against there. A lot of times you can um, do it in a way where you can't see the poster putty at all, but if you do see it a little bit um, on your product, we can Photoshop it out, which is another joy of Photoshop there. Uh, but I would make sure, see if you can do it without seeing the putty first. Or this putty is great because it actually sticks to other things. I could stick it to the product behind it and kind of stick this on top and see if it'll stay. Okay. Um, so they use all kinds of little tips and tricks to get products where they want them to be and to stay where they want them to stay perfectly. Um, I'm going to leave this here. I can see the putty, but that's okay because um, everything is black around it. So I can just Photoshop out this putty and make it black in my picture. Okay. Um, so, you know, think about how you're arranging your product. What kind of angles do you want to create? And where is your camera going to go? Are we over here? Are we looking up at it? Are we looking down at it? Are you going to zoom in real close to it? Let's talk about light. Our product. Uh, I put it up on this level so that it would have to look darker than it would be straight on down here. On the back. Um, you want to play with your background and make sure there's no wrinkles where you don't want them.
one light here that is shining a very direct, strong light onto this product, which I kind of, I want because I'm trying to emphasize some of the texture and patterns um, on my product. So there's some really nice texture on the front um, of this product that I want to bring out with this light. So I'm going to move it around until I see that the most. And I think what I'm going to do is put it here. I'm actually going to end up applying it this way because that creates more shadow over here. Um, I can even put it directly to the side of my product if I want to. I'm also going to lower my light so that, oh yeah, that, that's, a, that's what I want to do here, right? So that it's right on the same plane as my object and it's directly lighting what I want it to be lighting. Now, if you look at this side over here, because I have such a strong light on that side, it's casting a really nasty shadow in here. So there's a few things that we can do. The first thing I'm going to try to do to get rid of the shadow is to use the soft box. The soft box makes a very nice diffused light, um, but it also spreads the light out. So I'm going to see if maybe I can position this soft box so that it's light hits the shadow, but doesn't affect what I have going on here with this light in my product. Um, so I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to sort of lower it a little bit. Let's see, if we turn it off and turn it on, you can see that it's lighting up some of my, my background. It makes it a bit lighter, but it's also lighting up this area, which actually is kind of nice. I kind of like that. Um, but that's not doing enough. Um, it's not lightening my background enough to get rid of that shadow, and I really don't like that shadow, so we're going to try to work on that. The thing I'm going to try to do is to use a reflector. Um, the reflector takes, takes the light. The reflector takes the light from the lamp I already have on, bounces it off of here, and reflects it back on whatever object you have. Getting it at the right angle, um, you can actually, I don't know if you guys can see it, but um, but reflecting it this way is actually bouncing a whole bunch of light back onto my object, which looks really nice, actually. Um, so I might want to consider a reflector here. Sometimes working with a partner in the studio is really helpful because you can have somebody holding things exactly where you want them to be. If you don't have a partner, though, um, you can improvise. Maybe I clip this to my background stand um, or prop it up so that it sits where I want it to sit. Now this still isn't doing much for my shadow. It's not at the right angle to get rid of the shadow here, but I did discover that I do like what it does when I, when I sort of reflect off of my object um, this way. I might pull in another light here and turn this on and just point this directly at my backdrop. I think that actually gets rid of the shadow more than anything else. So now I have two lights, one um, pointed directly at my backdrop to eliminate shadow, and the other one pointed directly at my object to uh, give it the nice texture and highlights and shadows that I want. And then what I could do is pull this in and light up my object as well. Now, that's the big overall setup, but there are some smaller things that I want to consider as well with this particular product. By lighting my product with one light um, from the side, it creates really dramatic shadows and highlights and really emphasizes the texture um, on the back. It also really brightens up all of this um, highlight. Um, all of this gold decoration that um, I really want to shine in my um, product. But the one thing that it's actually doing is leaving my label that's down here in the shadows. And the label is like the most important part of your product. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that it's highlighted and that it's in focus and that it's lit well and that you can read it in your photograph. Um, 
And that's the most important part. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to brighten up just the label, which in this case happens to be gold and shiny. So I'm going to really try to make it shine. Um, and I'm also going to try to get rid of this sh dark shadow right here that's a little distracting um, when I'm trying to look at the label. So to do that, I'm going to try a few things. We'll try this small mirror that I have. Oh, there I am. Hello. <laughs> um, we will also try a small um, reflective, just it's a tin, a lid to a tin. But because it's metal, it's going to be very nice and reflective. Um, to bounce the light from over here onto the label. So watch what happens when I pull this mirror in. Let's see that that lightens it up. I can now it kind of does like a huge area, and I want to keep the shadows and highlights on the top of the bag. So I don't want to do that. I want to try to just use, maybe I'll try to use the corner of it just to lighten up just that right there. I can also kind of move it over and try to get rid of that shadow so it lightens up like the whole bottom part. And that's pretty nice. Maybe I'll try to take a picture there. I can also try to move something. This is the tin, the small tin. It's less reflective than the mirror. Um, but it's a smaller area, so I'll try to, I'll take a picture there too, and you can see it, um, what it looks like. So that's what we can do. Now, I've seen videos where people use things as small as like dental tools, like the little dental mirror that your dentist uses to clean your mouth, um, to look at your teeth, <laughs> um, just to light up teeny tiny little parts of the product just like this. So this is what I want you to pay attention to, okay, in your, in your, photographs. So here is my overall setup. I've got one light on this side reflecting so that the shadows are gone on my background. I have a reflector reflecting the side of my object to light up some of these highlights. I have my main light over here which is shining on my product to um, emphasize my shadows and my highlights. And then I have my small reflector mirror here that is lighting up just some little details. So this is what I get. A few final thoughts about your product on placement. Make sure that you're meticulous. Pay attention to the shadows and the highlights and the details. Um, remember your job is to make this product look the best that it can so that people want to buy it. Uh, play with the lighting. With different uh, remember, you also have other lights. You have the umbrella lights, you have the flashes. There's other things that I didn't use in this demo that are also available to you. Uh, so just make sure that you're meticulous about it. Make sure that you pay attention to detail um, and shoot a lot. Also, watch your exposure. You can over or underexpose on purpose to bring out different parts of the picture. Um, and make sure that everything is in focus. Make sure that you and that there's no glare on your product that is uh, making it so you can't read that label. And make sure there's no distracting shadows on anything that will um, also distract from your product. So happy shooting. Um, experiment. Shoot a lot. And pay really close attention to what you're doing. Don't stop until you get it.